Welcome, Kunal, uh, to this debriefing session. Uh, congratulations on scoring a 740. Uh, how does it feel to score a V44? Yeah, it feels awesome, DJ. Thanks a lot, firstly, uh, for, for this opportunity. And yes, it feels great uh, to finally get uh, what I had aimed for. And to be honest, it is, it is above my expectations for V. Uh, I would have been happy with anything above V40. Uh, but yes, uh, feels feels awesome to uh, get a score which was which is above my above the expectations. I mean, we're proud to have you as an EG math student as well. And your case is very interesting because you focused on two things specifically. One was building very very strong and solid foundations, which is of course you use the EG math course for that. And then you practiced official questions, which is another strategy a lot of people kind of miss out when they are preparing as well. We're going to talk about the first part, uh, and we will begin with uh, the verbal section, of course, uh, where uh, you start off with SC, for example, right? So uh, take me through how you use the verbal course, what worked for you, and what are the things you took away from it? Got it. Yeah, so I think uh, I started off with the uh, with the SC, with the verbal section and that in within that the SC uh, course, uh, the sentence correction course. So and when I started, I had ample time. So uh, my approach during I never hurried. So whenever I when I whenever I sat down with the course and and I, and I watched those videos, uh, the videos are long. They you know they can at times seem a bit boring, but that is the luxury I would say the luxury of time that I had that I. Whenever I used to sit one hour, half an hour, it was absolute concentration. Uh, so I think those SC videos, uh, they helped me build concepts, which, uh, which I'd say it's like, as I, as I said, I have also written it in my review that it, it's like a gym. So, uh, it, if you watch those videos every day, every day, so there's a methodic methodic methodical approach that these videos, uh, help you imbibe. Uh, it's like mathematics, as you mentioned that, you know, you, you work, you, you watch those videos, you develop a process. Initially it takes time, but if you follow it step by step, you automatically start getting answers and, you know, you automatically become good at SC. So that is what I did. I'd say that I trusted the, the videos that, you know, whatever they are going, whatever these videos are going to teach me, that is going to be my method for solving each and every question. So I think with that, I started and then that is the thing that I took away. And especially I'd like to mention the meaning based approach. Uh, I personally feel that, you know, the process that the EGMAT SC course teaches you, it is perfect. Like it is, it is, it is good till 700 level questions, but beyond 700 level questions, you 50%, you need the process. And then the remaining 50%, you also need a meaning based approach, uh, to solve those questions quickly. I think that is where it worked wonders. Uh, I was able to, in fact, my SC scores throughout uh, my preparation in the mocks as well as in the, I feel in the in the final attempt, were always the best uh, as compared to other sections. So, and then credit goes to the meaning based approach. I'd say that you know, solving those seven hundred level questions uh, with good accuracy gives you that edge. And I think I would like to bring in a data point here that you gave a mock in October as well. And I remember uh, you didn't score too well on verbal. I think you started off at 20th percentile on, on SC okay. and you scored a V24. And then, of course, when you scored a V44, you scored above the 90th percentile in SC, of course. And that journey, that's that's very interesting because I think you did everything very me methodol methodically. Yes. So... Um, the pre-assessment, the post-assessment quiz, and you've gone through the entire course end to end. I want to know what are the little things you did in between as well, because not a lot of people talk about that. Did you create notes? How did you revise? Tell me those things too. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant point that you've brought, which I skipped. So yes, so, so once I started uh, preparing, I, I was watching the videos. And as I said, the videos are long and they're long yeah. for a purpose. It's, it's a gym, as I said. It is preparing you every day. You have to do those push-ups to get to that final thing. So, and then there comes a time that, you know, probably you are halfway through the course. You are, you have reached parallelism and there, you know, you have probably, the, the, the concept that you learned regarding verbs and tenses have become a bit hazy. And that happened with me as well. And I had to, again, so rewatch some of the videos, but then I, I decided that, so there's this summary file, which yeah. the EGMAT uh, also provides. So I took a printout of that file uh, uh, and 
what i did was that i noted down uh, my pointers my understanding on those pages only and then i made it a point that every week on a weekend let's say when i'm starting like let's say saturday morning it's a, it's, it's going to be an 8 hour study day i used to start with reading a few articles and going through those summary uh, worksheets every week so i think that really helped me strengthen the concept so that really build me uh, help help me build that confidence that you know even though i am learning new things those old things are solidified so i don't need to go through them again so i think yes i definitely that that really helped i definitely didn't make notes and uh, continue to build up got it oh and that's a very good point because not a lot of people really mention that in their interviews they don't really tell you the background work that really happens in getting that sort of improvement now let's talk about CR and RC as well. In that score that you got, I mean, your CR was around the fiftieth percentile, and RC was again around the thirtieth percentile. What magic did you do with the course and otherwise to kind of get to uh, where you are today? Yeah. So I think CR uh, again. I think when I gave that mock, it was just the preliminary mock. So uh, yeah. I think to be honest, my timing. So I, I at that time I felt that you know everything is so easy. I need to solve this. So even though I was spending five minutes on a question, I was not realizing. So pacing is is definitely there. But yes, um, I was not aware of how to. So the first time when I saw these CR questions, I thought that okay, this is going to be a tough nut to crack. Uh, so I was very eager to get to this CR section, finish this SC section because I knew that you know this is the thing that is that is going to be a uh, uh, a challenge yeah so i started watching the videos and and i think a lot of people say it i had heard before this is this is one of the things that eg mat you know proudly uh, uh, owns up like it, it it markets as well is the fact is the uh, the the approach uh, uh, i forgot the pre thinking uh, approach the pre thinking approach yes mm-hmm. so i think that is one approach that 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 works wonders uh if you apply it properly so i built that pre thinking approach mm-hmm. while watching the videos and after a time it sort of becomes a habit that you pre think now what was happening with me was that with pre thinking i was able to solve a lot of questions with accuracy but at that times you just are not able to pre think so mm-hmm. i sort of developed this for cr specifically developed this uh, modified strategy of selective pre thinking mm-hmm. i whenever i used to see a cr question i used there was this automatic timer that got built uh, with in a practice that you know, with if within 10 seconds i'm not getting any any pre thoughts uh, i'm not able to follow the pre thinking process then i'm just going to uh, follow the process of elimination uh, and go through the choices so i think that really helped that, that was the difference from let's say uh, a v38 to finally crossing a v34 oh. to finally crossing v40 because i was able to get more accuracy and you know finish the entire cr section within the stipulated time so that for cr i think pre thinking is something that i would recommend but again it 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 requires time it requires you to spend those initial hours and then you eventually become good at it for uh, uh, rc to be honest uh, i did go through the reading strategies uh, but one thing that i did from the very beginning when i started preparing for gmat is i bought a uh, economics subscription a yeah. six month subscription and i, I was not at all an avid reader so I, what i decided was that every day every day whether i study or not i will just read two articles and then i'll start studying hmm. so that i think over time helped a lot and i used to apply the rc reading strategies taught in the course while reading those economist articles nice. so it was not that i was just reading it for fun i was actually imbibing it and you know with the mindset that probably if, if there are 10 questions asked from this passage after uh, this after if if at all they were asked so i should be able to answer so i think that again uh, really helped and that was the difference so i i became i would say my scores in uh, rc especially during the latter half when i when one month before the final exam they were very good like rc would have been in this v44 would have been a contributing factor mm. so i think um, i want to talk about two things here the first is of course the cr approach the fact that you could get to a v44 tells me that that contingency plan that you had in place helped you pace out cr questions because a lot of students get stuck with cr questions between the last two options and they waste a lot of time there very very smart 
Uh, the second thing about using the reading strategies on economist passages, uh, that's that's phenomenal. That's you taking our methods and then being diligent with it and you know taking it to the next level. I think that's something that's really beautiful that you've been able to take out of the course as well. Um, now, this is this is all about verbal and building the right foundations, of course, that helped you get to V44. Uh, but you also used uh, the new Quant course extensively, right? So talk to me about, um, you know, any modules, if you remember from the algebra and geometry course that really stood out for you and just the way it's kind of built. Right. So I think uh, I definitely like to mention the the quant uh, the, the upgraded quant 2.0 uh, which which was AI enabled and that so when I bought the course when I purchased the course this wasn't launched yeah so good thing I started with verbal by the time I reached quant all those upgrades had come in and uh, I, I, at that time I was least really bothered so I was like okay let me see what what uh, what what the course is. And my expectations from the very beginning from the course was that I need this course to brush up, to, to just brush up on the concepts that, uh, you know, it's been a while that I practiced yeah. uh, high school mathematics uh, and do that quickly so that I could then move on to the official questions. And I think the course, the way it was designed, especially the Quant 2.0, it, it totally, you know, what it was totally what I was expecting in terms of, uh, so the new course has diagnostic quizzes. Yes. Um, so what those quiz do is that you give a diagnostic quiz. Let's say you are you are dealing with algebra after ages. You you just you know you just use whatever knowledge you have and you give that uh, uh, test. And if you perform well, it will automatically tell you to skip certain sections of uh, the subsequent videos, which would have otherwise taken let's say a day or two out of my uh, studying schedule. And I think that is what I was looking for. That you know give me something that could help me quickly brush up and just like help me move to uh, solving questions but i think the diagnostic quizzes are really are the are a game changer i'd say and the course in also i'd say uh, to be very honest the previous one i'd say was was subpar uh, the, the the course that existed before it as compared to english as compared to verbal but now with con 2.0 i think there's there's eg mad has taken a leap in you know improving its making its math, its uh, quant course as good as its verbal course. So yeah, I think a uh, wonderful initiative with that one. Got it. I think the expertise was always there. And, you know, I, I think Pal and Rajat were very focused on building a very, you know, robust foundation for the verbal course. Right. And uh, we wanted to bring that to quant. And with quant, now you have the expert AI, right? The one that you talked yes, about right. that just really takes you through the course. If you're good at it, it's going to take you through the course the right way. And if you're not so good at it, it's going to build everything right up from the foundations, which is what people who are weak with quant, us non-engineers, uh, they really value something like that, you know, because everything is not as intuitive as uh, as it seems per se. Definitely. So I, I think that's super helpful. Now, I just want to touch upon this last bit about you practicing OG questions because you did, did a lot of that, right? How did that kind of help you uh, get prepared for the test because not at times people say OG questions are easier as well, uh, stuff like that. How did you kind of practice these questions and what did you learn from them? Got it. Yeah. So, so as I said, so my strategy was gain the concepts, then move on to the OG questions. So uh, I, I think this beautiful resource DMAT club. Uh, uh, so I used, uh, so, so I used to solve a lot of questions, simple as that, uh, across levels not only uh, 700 level questions but uh, my like as soon as i used to be clear with one of with any concept i used to go on gmat club and just solve questions over questions questions over questions and i think that really helped me become very intuitive that okay okay this is the thing this is what the question is asking this is the approach that's mm. it done so i think solving a lot of questions did help but i at the same time i'd also like to mention that, that you know if you just go on to the to do that to gmat club and start solving og questions without having a solid foundation that is probably a double edged sword it could go your way but it might just you know end up demotivating it you usually so, doesn't yeah. it really doesn't because yeah, you practice yeah. like tons and tons of questions but you're not really taking away a lot from it right the smart thing right. you did was that 
you did the course, you understood this is the approach to do it. And then you went and applied it on OG questions, which was, again, a very, very smart thing to do and a good decision to make. Um, again, yeah, thank you uh, so much for, you know, sharing your views uh, about the course. Uh, any last few things that you would kind of want to mention to, you know, your peers taking the GMAT around the world? Yeah, so I think uh, my only recommendation would be to to spend a lot of like if you have the luxury of time, just just ensure that you're spending that time. And again, I think for me, uh, following EGMAT's methodical approach and you know uh, building that uh, approach day over day, and then finally becoming good at it, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. So be patient. That is another message I'd like to give to everyone. And if you are patient, if you are investing time and, and using the right resources, so then I think uh, you can see, like, I got a very low score on the first mock and here I am with a 740, which I believe is a good yeah, score. So, I mean, yeah, I, that... I was just thinking about it because that's a solid 250 point improvement from your mock. <laughs> yeah. and it, it must be quite something, you know, to think about where did I start off with? Where am I now? And a 250 point improvement is fun. It's phenomenal, right? Uh, again, congratulations, Kunal. It was really nice talking to you. Stay in touch and all the best for your B school yeah. applications. Thanks a lot, DJ. Thanks a lot.